Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week, you've probably noticed uh, a little change in the intro to these movies. I've decided to have a little uh, music there, some nice clouds, make a nice uh, intro to the film. And I think it'll sort of add some standardization to these Monday movies and shows you that I care. If you have any comments about it, you can leave them for me on YouTube, or I'd prefer if you left them on my blog. I see them uh, more easily there, www.mrbluesummers.com. So this week, I've got a real treat for you. We're going to be looking at uh, how you can cut and dress a material that you got online. Um, and you can extract from it, using what you know in your mind about, the, about that map, you can extract a bump map and a, def and a glossy and specular map just from one image. And what makes this a neat technique is that you don't necessarily have to have the bump map pre-made for you. Um, you don't need matte cap to do uh, awesome looking materials. So let me show you what the diffuse map looks like by itself on a material. So you've got this right here. You've got this um, a sphere, it's got HDRI illumination, uh, and just the diffuse map. Now it looks pretty good all by itself, and the novice user would probably just leave it like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to move past that. We're going to try to extract more information from this diffuse map and make it just a richer texture, a richer material for our scene. So let's get to it. Back here in Photoshop, I have the original uh, map, which I got from the 3D Total Texture Library. And I've already saved it out as a diffuse map, so let's move on to the bump map. Now when I start off creating a bump map, I like to use one of these filter layers right here in my layers palette. I like black and white because I think it gives me uh, a lot of control over how the colors turn into shades of, of gray in the image as it's being uh, desaturated. So I know that the reds are that rust color and the rust is digging into the material so those need to be dark. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the reds down a little bit. And the yellows are kind of that moss and the old paint. And I want those to be pushed back as well. The greens are more of the moss. And the cyans have a lot of control over the, those paint chips, which are already white. So we're going to make them even whiter. I'm going to click OK. Now I chose this particular material for a reason because the reds are supposed to be pushed back and they're already pretty dark. And the whites are supposed to be white because they're the, the thickest layers on this material. So it's very convenient that I can just throw this map on there. There's one more thing that I want to do though and that's apply, uh, I want to reduce the, sat the contrast of this map. So I'm going to apply a brightness and contrast filter. And I'm just going to reduce the contrast a little bit and reduce the brightness. And that's going to make the deeper recesses a little more common with, with respect to each other, but not on par with the brightness of the paint chips. So I'm going to save this as. I'm going to hit Control Shift S, and that's Save As. And I'm going to save it out as my bump map. Save. I replace that. And now, back in 3D Studio Max, I've already prepared a material that has uh, the bump map and eventually our, our specular and glossy PSDs applied to it. So I've gone ahead and engaged my bump map and thrown the bump.psd into this slot. I like working with .psd because I feel that it gives me the liberty to do whatever I need to do to the map in Photoshop without having to compress it down into a JPEG or a bitmap every single time I need to see how it looks in Studio Max. So let's go ahead and render this bump map and see what it looks like. I actually haven't applied this material. I'm just going to go ahead and apply the material now with this bump map applied and I'm going to render it. Now the good news is that you can start to see some of this detail popping out here with these paint layers. 
The downside is that now it's accentuating the fact that we don't have a specular and glossy map applied to this material. So we need to go back into Photoshop and make those maps in much the same way. So for starters, we know that we want something very similar. These paint chips are somewhat unweathered and so they need to have the highest specularity and the highest glossiness. Some of these darker areas, like with the moss, get no specularity and no glossiness. But we do want some with the rust. Rust is actually a little bit reflective in the way that it acts with light, so we need that. I'm going to follow much the same pattern by selecting black and white. Definitely want those cyans way up. I'm going to turn down those greens for now. Same thing with the yellows and the reds. So we've turned everything all the way down. We want it super black in these areas. But we need to get a little bit more specific. I want these greens to have zero glossiness and specularity. So I'm going to click on Select, Color Range. And I'm going to use my eyedropper here and I'm going to pick one of these green areas. And that's going to pick all the moss bits in my diffuse map. And for that, I'm going to come back into my layers palette and I'm going to apply curves. And I'm going to pull the curve way down because I want those dark, dark, dark. And now when we turn the black and white back on, we see the effect. It's darkened up all the moss. I'm going to apply one more curves to the entire image. So there's, there's no selection here. And I'm just going to darken it up again. I want glossiness to really make this material pop. I'm going to click OK. So again, I'm going to hold down Control Shift S, and I'm going to save this under spec gloss.psd. Same process as before. And once again, I've already applied these to the material, spec and gloss, right here. So let's take a render and see how this looks. And there we're starting to see the beauty of our material pop out. We're seeing that it's reacting to that uh, specular only light that I put in the peripheral correctly. The paint chips are reflecting nicely while the rust is staying well pushed back. And for this general diffuse lighting over here, the material pops out in a very subtle way. It's really beautiful. So I encourage you to try this out on your own. Try applying what you see in your mind and what you know the material should be like through Photoshop or through GIMP in order to pull out the diffuse map and make it into something much more than it could have otherwise been. Stay tuned next week. We'll have another Monday movie for you. Until then, happy rendering.